just what makes me angry. Gridlock traffic, people who talk during the movies, and non-dairy creamer. I mean, what the heck is that stuff anyway? But angry can mean a few different things. An Italian dish called penne alla arrabbiata translates to angry pasta. And in this dish, that means spicy, sometimes a little too spicy. So Elle is here to show us how to make arrabbiata and temper that anger. We want heat, <laughs> but we don't want scorching heat. Okay. And a lot of these recipes have a tendency to be thin in texture and in flavor. We're gonna fix that today. Great. Okay, and we're gonna start with tomatoes. Traditionally, this dish is made with fresh tomatoes, but we wanna be able to enjoy it in the winter months too. So we're gonna use canned, peeled, whole tomatoes. Great. We've tried it with diced tomatoes. They have a tendency to not really break down. We tried it with crushed tomatoes, and they taste a little too cooked. But these work perfectly for this recipe. We're just gonna pulse them in the food processor with their natural juices, and that's gonna be the base of our sauce. And is that a 28 ounce can? Yes, yep. it is. 10 pulses should do the trick. I think that looks great. So let's move over to our base sauce. Okay. So we have in here a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And I'm just gonna put our flame on medium. And a lot of these sauces, like I told you, are kind of thin and flat. Today we're gonna make a very robust sauce. We're gonna create a more complex flavor overall. And so it's not gonna just be angry. It's gonna be delicious. Ooh. We have one clove of garlic. And the oil is cold at this point, just starting everything off we're in the cold oil. We're starting everything off in the cold oil. We're gonna let it all cook together at the same time. Okay. We have two tablespoons of tomato paste. Here's our secret ingredient. This is anchovies. It's umami rich, four fillets of anchovy. And it's minced into a paste, so no one even know it's in there. So we're adding a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Pepper flakes are a traditional ingredient for this sauce. That's where the fire is going to start to happen in our recipe. We're also gonna add half a teaspoon of sweet paprika. Sweet paprika is made from ground peppers, so it has a smoky and fruity flavor to it. Another great part of our sauce are these pepperoncinis. We have about a quarter cup here. They're not too intense on the heat, but because they're packed in vinegar, they're gonna add a little zest to the sauce. Love that. And they're gonna go into our sauce. Get that hit of vinegar as soon as they hit the hot oil in there. Oh yeah. We're gonna end off with a half teaspoon of salt and pepper. And we're gonna just let this cook for about seven or eight minutes until it's a deep red. So the four different kinds of peppers that went in there is the black pepper you just put in there. Yes. There was the red pepper flakes. You have the pepperoncini and the paprika, which yes. a lot of people don't think of as a pepper, but it really is just a ground pepper. So a lot of complex pepper flavor in there. That's what we're going for. All right, Bridget, it's been seven or eight minutes. Our sauce is a nice deep red. Oh, yes. Smells great. It smells incredible. We're gonna add our whole tomatoes here in their sauce. And you're right, those do have a great texture. They're not pureed all the way. I'm just gonna give it a stir just to get that all incorporated. Oh. It smells great, man. Yeah. Finally, we're gonna top this with a quarter cup of pecorino. It's gonna give our sauce a smoky, salty flavor, mm. and it's also gonna add a little body to it. So we're adding it right into the sauce. Right into the sauce. I'm gonna give this a little stir, and while this is going, we can start talking pasta. All right. We have here four quarts of water that we're bringing to a boil. You only need four quarts per pound. And since we're only working with one pound of pasta today, we're all set to go. And that is the magic ratio. A lot of people don't use enough water when they're cooking pasta. But four quarts of water to one pound of pasta means the pasta's not going to stick together as it cooks. So remember, rule number one, four quarts to one pound. That's right. Bridget, our sauce is done cooking. Oh, it's been 20 so minutes. Good. We're just gonna cover it and keep it warm until our pasta's ready. And we're gonna move on to our pasta water. It's rapidly boiling, so that's an indication that it's time to move on to the next step, which is adding a tablespoon of table salt. And our one pound of penne pasta. So we're gonna just give it a little stir so that it doesn't stick. This is great, L seasoned the water. Too many people leave salt out when they are cooking pasta. But one tablespoon of table salt or two tablespoons of kosher salt are perfect for our four quarts of water. And what you didn't add, and this is key, no oil went into that water. Do not oil the water for cooking pasta. What happens? It waterproofs the pasta and the sauce won't stick. Bridget, there's another pasta roll that I think is like a hidden pasta roll. <laughs> We're gonna reserve half a cup of this pasta water 
because it's full of starch and it's going to play to our favor to use for thinning out our sauce. Oh, that's a great idea because yeah. sometimes you have to adjust the consistency right at the end and what better than hot pasta water already has pasta starch in it. That's right. All right, we have a half cup here. Would you drain that pasta for us to get started? Certainly will. I think we're at a place where we can start to be happy about this angry pasta. So we're just gonna add the sauce to the pot. That's so much better than a lot of times people will take the pasta, just put it directly on the plate, put a little bit of sauce on top. What's that all about? It's definitely not about covering all the pasta, <laughs> that's for sure. All right, we're gonna give it a nice stir. You can smell it. Yeah, I certainly can. And it's kind of thick, so maybe we'll put a little bit of our pasta water in there. Too. Good idea. I'm gonna start with about a quarter cup. And you can adjust this as you need it. If you like your pasta a little thick, you don't have to add the starchy water at all. And what you did there was perfect too. You added the water first before you seasoned it with salt and pepper because that water's already seasoned. That's right. So a little salt, a touch of pepper. I'm so ready to eat. Are you ready? Uh, since last Tuesday. <laughs> that is beautiful. Oh. If it even tastes one quarter as good as it smells, then we're not going to be angry. All right, would you like a little sprinkle? I would love it. All right. You know, I've started using Pecorino Romano more than I do Parmesan. I really love that sharp, tangy flavor that it has. What do you think? For one thing, it does have some spice to it. Mm -hmm. So we haven't completely tamed that beast. It's still a rabiata. You still want a little anger there but it is not raging. It's not that full on fire in your mouth where you can't enjoy or taste any of it. Plus, I love all that savoriness that comes out of it, that anchovies, yeah. pecorino romano, and even that tomato paste, all cooked so much so that it really concentrated the flavors. Elle, this is an amazing pasta. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank you. Well, as it turns out, a rabiata can still be a little bit angry if balanced with hearty ingredients. For complex, not overwhelming heat, Use a trio of peppers, red pepper flakes, paprika, and pickled pepperoncini. To counter the spice with savory flavor, add pecorino romano, tomato paste, and anchovies, just a little bit, right into the sauce. And there you have it, from our test kitchen to your kitchen, an excellent recipe for penne arrabbiata. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.